Number 41, letter A. How long would it take a 1.5 times 10 to the 5 kilogram airplane with engines that produce 100 megawatts of power to reach a speed of 250 meters per second and an altitude of 12 kilometers if an air is if air resistance were negligible. All right. Um, so let's just think about the general gist of what we're given here. Right. We're given um, a power right in megawatts. They're also telling us you know speeds, and they also are giving us heights essentially. Right. So that sounds like maybe kinetic and potential energy. And then they're asking us to calculate how long, right? Something uh, is taking place. So what I'm thinking is I'm trying to relate energy, power, and time. And I look at the equation over here on the right, right? And that's going to be the equation I'm going to select. So for letter A here, let's detail the uh, power equation. So power is equal to the change in energy uh, divided by time. So now let's expand on, um, let's expand on the, uh, well, actually, first, why don't we solve this for time, okay? So solving that for time, it would simply be that the time is equal to the change in energy, all right, divided by the power. So they tell us the power, right? So they tell us that the power is 100 megawatts. But the thing is, remember, when we plug power into our equations, we would prefer it to be in just watts. So we can do an easy conversion, all right? So 100 uh, megawatts times then megawatt on the bottom, watt on the top, and there are 10 to the 6 watts and 1 megawatt. All right, so those cancel. So basically, so basically, this would be 10 raised to the 8th watts. Okay? So that's our power value down here. Okay, so we have this. Now, in order to find the time, right, I still need to find this change in energy. So again, um, we have to think about, right, what types of energy are involved in this problem. Well, they're talking about speeds and heights. So therefore, both potential and kinetic energy um, are part of this problem. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand delta E, okay, uh, to include now both the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy, okay? And that should then be divided by power. Now from here, what I'm going to do is expand on these. So notice how I can start with something very simple and straightforward. And now I'm going to start to get become more elaborate, essentially. Um, and that's generally the way that these problems are structured. All right, so now we have the change in kinetic energy would be one half mass times then the final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared, plus then the change in potential energy, which would be uh, mass times gravity multiplied by the final height minus the initial height. Okay, all divided by, make it straighter, all divided by power. Okay, so again, all I need to now know is, do I know these variables? Do I know the mass? Well, yeah, they told me, right? Uh, the mass of the airplane was 1.5 times 10 to the 5 kilograms. Do I know the final velocity? Yeah, it said it reaches 250 meters per second. And it started, uh, it doesn't, uh, does it say it starts at rest? To reach a speed. No, it doesn't say it starts at rest, but I will need to assume that it does because that would be the simplest assumption. All right, so the initial velocity here would be zero. Again, I know the mass, I know gravity, and I'm assuming it starts at zero height, okay? And then it finally gets to a height of 12 kilometers, as it says in the problem. Um, though, just keep in mind, right, we don't want to know kilometers, we need to know meters. All right, so just keep in mind that 12 kilometers is basically the same thing as, right, 12,000 meters. Okay, just a simple conversion. All right, so now I basically have everything I need, right? So I'm just going to simply plug in here. So let's put a little arrow down here. Let's plug in the values, okay? Uh, you can do some math to bring out the mass and so on and so forth. That's fine. But I'm just going to plug everything in as I, as I see it, and then we'll just calculate, okay? So 1 half times um, 1.5 times 10 to the uh, fifth times then the final velocity squared, which was 250 squared minus zero. So that's just zero. So I'm just going to leave it there. Plus then the mass, right? There's now the potential energy part times 10 to the five multiplied by G, which is 9.80 multiplied by then the initial height minus the final height. And again, we found the height to be in, in terms of meters. It was 12,000, right? And that whole thing now, all of this is now divided by the power. And remember the power is in watts and that's what we calculated over here. 
So that's simply going to be 10 raised to the eighth. Okay. And all we have to simply do, ladies and gentlemen, is just plug it into the calculator. All right. So 0 0.5 times 1.5 times 10 to the 5 times 250 squared plus 1.5 times 10 to the 5th times 9.8 times 12,000. And all of that divided by 10 raised to the 8th. And we get a time value of about 223 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to put that just right above it. So the time is equal to 223 seconds. Okay, that's how long it would take. So that concludes part A. Let's take a look now at part B. And uh, now essentially they're asking us how long, right, still, if it actually takes... Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have read it first before I start assuming. So if it actually takes 900 seconds, what is the power, right? So it should take 223 seconds, but in this case they're saying, well, if it takes the 900, how much power is produced? Okay, so let's take a look at letter, I'll put B over here now in a different color. So just think about how the problem would change, all right? We're basically using the same equation, power is equal to change in energy, all right, over time, okay? Now, I need to know these two variables in order to find the power. So they told me now the time has changed to 90 seconds excuse me, 900 seconds, right? So the time down here is 900, great. And now what about the change in energy? Is that the same as before? Yeah, it's the same, right? It's still gonna reach the same speed, still gonna reach the same altitude. So all of this over here that we did, this numerator value should be the same, all right? So what I'm gonna do here, I'm not gonna rewrite that whole thing because it would literally be this whole thing again, all right? I'm just going to uh, calculate it, all right, and then plug it in for E, okay? Actually, I did that already. So if we, um, so that numerator value there should be 2.23, well, obviously you can get it from knowing that, right? So uh, 2.23 times 10 to the 10, okay? Times 10 to the 10. And now, instead of, that was the total energy value, reaching a speed of 250 meters per second and ascending to uh, 12,000 meters, and now the time is 900 seconds, so now we're going to divide it by 900. So the new power is going to be, so 2.23 times 10 to the 10 divided by now 900. So this works out to be, the power is in this case 2 point, looks like 4.8, 2.48 times 10 raised to the, let's see, 3, 7. Okay, times 10 to the 7, and that is in terms of watts, right? So let me just make that a little neater, watts. Okay, so that would be the power. So that's the answer for letter C, excuse me, for letter B. And now let's take a look at letter C. So given this power, meaning the power we just calculated, what is the average force of air resistance if the airplane takes uh, 1200 seconds? Okay, all right, so now, uh, so it says hint, right? You must find the distance the plane travels in 1200 seconds, assuming constant acceleration. All right. So now um, we are to use the same power. Okay. And now basically what's changing, right, is going to be, uh, well, actually, what do you think is changing in this problem? The energy value, right? The energy value is probably going to change. So let's take a look at letter C now. All right, so here let me let me detail the equation again. So power is equal to change in energy, all right, over time, okay? But now in this case, so given this power, so I'm assuming it's the power we calculated in part B. So given the power of 2.48 times 10 to the seven watts, so we got 2.48 times 10 to the seven watts, all right? Now it's going to take the plane to a, it's going to, excuse me, it's now going to take the plane 1,200 seconds, okay? So we can put the time value down there in the bottom, 1,200 seconds. And now essentially I'm going to find the change in energy, okay? Now what we should notice is, well, let's calculate and then you'll see what we notice, all right? So this is basically just a cross multiplication here. So we'll do 2.48 times 10 to the 7th times 1,200. Okay, and here we get 2.48. Uh, 9, 8, right? So 2.98 times 10 to the 10. 
okay? 2.98 times 10 to the 10, and this is now in joules, right? So what do we notice? So we notice that the energy value has uh, increased, right? And why has it increased? Well, it has increased now because there was some air resistance that the plane had to overcome. So now let's calculate now the distance, okay? The reason being is because if we look over here on the right-hand side, all right, given the question that they're asking us, it says, what is the average force, right? So if I'm looking for average force, all right, of air resistance, I need to somehow relate force to energy, and that is via this equation over here on the right-hand side, right? It says that work is equal to the force times the distance, times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. So if I wanna find force, right, I need to know the work or energy of that particular force and the distance. So now uh, let's just simply calculate the uh, distance that the plane travels this time, all right? So remember the plane is traveling for uh, 1200 seconds and it says assume, assume constant uh, acceleration. Okay, so let's see. All right, so now let's assume that um, it's going to reach now the 250 meters per second in 1200 seconds, okay? So in order to find the distance, so let's write the knowns. I'm gonna write them on the top, right? We know the, uh, essentially the initial velocity is zero, right? The final velocity of this thing is gonna be 250. We know the time it's gonna to take to reach that final velocity of 1200, right, seconds. And again, we're trying to find the distance, okay? We're trying to find D. All right, now, um, <clears throat> in other words, uh, do we know a formula that relates these variables to each other? And I think, we, I think we do, right? Remember, if it's constant acceleration, I can use this formula that the displacement should equal the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by two and that whole thing multiplied by time, right? It's essentially average velocity. So therefore, I can say that the displacement here will equal zero plus 250, which would just be 250, over two, multiply that now by time, which was 1200 seconds. And now from here, the displacement is simply, so it's 250 times 1200, divide that by two. So now we get a distance of 1.5, so here it is, 1.5 times 10, times 10 raised to the three, four, five times 10 raised to five meters, okay? So it's about 150,000 meters. All right, so that's now our displacement or the distance, right, that the uh, airplane travels. So uh, now what we need to figure out is we need to figure out, well, okay, so I know the distance here. <clears throat> now I'm thinking about, well, what's the work? Well, the work here of friction or, well, of air resistance, which is a type of friction, um, is basically the difference between this energy value that we needed to input now and this, uh, excuse me, and this energy value, all right, that was inputted before. So we can find the di difference between those two. That is the work that was, necess that was needed to overcome uh, air resistance, all right? So why don't we write that down? I'll write that down over here. I'm starting to lose some space, but uh, let's see. So let's say the work due to air resistance right, will simply be equal to the 2.98 times 10 to the 10 minus now 2 point, whoops, 2.23 times 10 raised to the 10. All right, and those are both in terms of joules. So therefore the work of air resistance will also be in joules. So let's just do that subtraction. So 2.98 times 10 to the 10 uh, minus 2.23 times 10 to the 10. And here we get a value of 7.5, 7.50 times 10 should be to the nine. Let me just double check, three, six, nine. Great, times 10 to the nine joules. So that is the work of air resistance there. Now, since I know the work of air resistance and I know the distance that the plane has traveled, I can now easily find the force, right? By virtue of this equation. So the, angle, the angles are gonna line up, not a problem. So it's based on, just simplify this now to the work is equal to the force times the distance, okay? Let me just put it in red. All right, so the work here is equal to the force times the distance. 
So the work was 7.50 times 10 to the 9 is equal to F, right, times D. But remember, i got to divide out the D from both sides, so I'm just going to do that right away, just to save a little space. So divided by that distance of 1.5 times 10 to the 5 meters, and now the force value is, let's simply throw it on into the calculator. All right, so we got that value divided by 1.5 times 10 to the 5. And we get 50,000 or 5.00 times 10 to the fourth, right? Times 10 raised to the fourth. And that is in terms of Newtons, ladies and gentlemen. All right, and that would be the, uh, oops, that will be now the average uh, force. All right. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. That would help us out tremendously. And I thank you very much. And I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care now.